Hello and welcome to Ginghamsburg. I'm Pastor Rachel and I am grateful that you've joined us. We've been pairing God lessons with practical ways for us to make our money work. And although talking about money isn't always easy, there's a freedom that comes when we're honest with ourselves and God about our finances. So let yourself be free because the opposite of free is broke. Broke in our old habits and financial situations, broke in our old grumbling, broke in the mindset that we bring to each day. God's people were broke, grumbling in the wilderness. They were whining. They couldn't see a hope-filled future. Sounds like 2020 to me. But let me tell you, when we focus on the grumbling, God focuses on the transforming. When we focus on the lack, God's arranging the abundance. When we focus on limited resources, God says, I, I alone will supply all your needs. We human beings are collective piece of work, right? But reading through these stories in the Bible, it's clear that these folks missed it too. But God isn't obsessed with people getting it all right. Our God knows humans are works in progress. And God desires for us to be on the journey, willing to take that next step toward freedom. And today, we are engaging in a practice that has the potential to shape the way we make money work. So try something with me. Hold out your hands in front of you and make a fist. Now, sometimes this is how we handle our money, with a death grip. We don't want to let our money go. But what would happen if we did this? We opened our hands. Because with an open hand, not only is there an ability to give money away, but there's also an ability to actually receive, giving and receiving. That's God's rhythm of generosity. And it carries with it an ongoing cycle of hope. Have you ever wanted to be part of something bigger than your own life that spreads throughout the world? Have you ever wanted to be part of something that lasts like long after you're gone? Yeah, we call that a legacy. And whether you have big plans for your stuff or not, uh, whether you realize that there's a future that goes beyond the date on your tombstone or not. Today with, with open hands and open minds and open hearts, we acknowledge our longing to be part of something bigger, more impactful, a legacy that ripples out beyond us. So God, open our hearts, open our minds, and open our hands. Set us free.
praise your faithfulness. Oh, 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 oh. You're so faithful. You're so faithful. You're so faithful. I put all my confidence in you. I trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. In the storm.
Welcome to Gingensburg Church. If this happens to be your first time joining us, we would love it if you introduced yourself. Not like out loud right now. I can't hear you through this screen. But here's how you do it. Text NEW, N-E-W, to the number on the screen. And we'll text you right back with a digital form. Fill that out and voila, you have a place to belong. I gotta be honest though. You picked an interesting time to join us for the first time. Today is Commitment Weekend, the one time out of the year we ask our members and regular attenders to consider how generous they hope to be over the next year. Now, if you sit through worship today and you're like, dude, I am totally down to that, then of course, we are not going to stop you. We're not funding a social club. We're building connections and support systems for people, especially kids who don't yet know the love of Jesus. If you want to take a look at the digital commitment card, you can find it at bit.ly slash 2021 commit card. At the close of worship today, Pastor Rachel will invite you to prayerfully consider your commitment to the next year of ministry. The past couple of weekends, we've talked very practically about money, the importance of budgeting and, and getting out of debt. If money is still a pain point for you, as I'm sure it is for most of us, we have something really exciting to share with you. Have you heard of Dave Ramsey? Say yes. Dave is a guru of personal finances and generosity. He's created several resources for the local church, including Financial Peace University, which has been a core class here at Gingensburg for several years. Well, we wanna give you a gift. We have purchased a collection of Dave Ramsey resources and wanna give you access to Ramsey Plus for free. A budgeting app, a baby step tracker, and access to other resources, it's all there. We've put everything you need to know in the Church at Home Toolkit. You can find the toolkit in the Worship tab on the Gingensburg app or at gingensburg.org slash lifegroups. Next weekend is drive-in worship at both the Tip City and Fort McKinley campuses. Hot drinks and sweet treats will be available at both locations. But come early for a delicious caffeinated drink and stay later after drive-in worship at the Tip City campus for an exciting family ministry <clears throat> drive-through drive adventure, adventure experience. These guys make me sound so good. In two weeks then, I will see you and your full trunk of candy at Trunk or Treat. Register for your spot at bit.ly slash Tip City Halloween. We can't wait to see all your kids. Well, that's it from me. Grab a notebook and open your Bible or your Bible app. We're about to take a deep dive into the book of Exodus, chapter 16. about God and money. Let's catch up. We're hanging out in Exodus chapter 16, where, where God patiently teaches the beloved Israelites what it means to trust and depend on God. These are lessons in the wilderness school, people. And the first week's lesson, we learn together that we trust and God provides. Simple to say, but oh so hard to put into daily practice. Now, last week, Pastor Mike Slaughter declared that hoarding stinks and gave us really practical steps to help us get out of debt. And this week, we're returning to Exodus 16, where we'll discover God's invitation to join with God in a generosity that lasts. Today, we're learning together. Exodus chapter 16, verse 32. Moses gave instructions to Israelites' families who had a history of focusing on their limitations. Listen to what Moses had to say. This is what the Lord has commanded. Take an omer of manna. That's about nine and a half cups. And keep it for generations to come so that they can see the bread that I gave you to eat in the wilderness when I brought you out of Egypt. 
So Moses said to Aaron, take a jar and put an omer of manna in it, then place it before the Lord to be kept for generations to come. As the Lord commanded Moses, Aaron put the manna and the tablets of the covenant law so that it might be preserved. The Israelites ate manna for 40 years until they came to the land that was settled. They ate manna until they reached the border of Canaan. Now, friends, there are so many lessons we could pull out of this God provision, but today we are focusing on the lasting effects of generosity, what we call legacy. It's a major theme when God is in the picture. Generosity is an invitation to live so freely that we became a blessing to God and to the people around us. It's an open invitation at every income level. Legacy whispers, taste and see that the Lord is good. And what about Moses talking about about that jar of manna? Well, what Moses was trying to say is, look what God did for us for 40 years. This is generosity. This is provision. This right here is our story. This is who we are. We are the people of God. God's generosity lasts. Now, friends, we are still talking about bread from heaven that God provided almost 3,500 years ago, long after the Greeks influenced the entire Mediterranean world long after the conquest of the Roman Empire past the long slog of the Middle Ages, through the pain and oppression of colonization and beyond the birth of the USA, beyond the confusion and chaos of 2020. And we're gonna still be talking about manna for years and years to come. When resources seem uh, that they're non-existent, God provided manna that lasts. Our God is a generous God. Don't forget what God has done. Don't forget that God provides. I know I'm talking to somebody today because you need to know that God sees you. You need to know you're not alone. You need to know that even though the night is long, joy is coming in the morning. That's God's generosity. Psalms 24, one reminds us that the earth is the Lord and everything in it, it all belongs to God. The entirety of Exodus 16 is God's invitation to be co-participants with God in walking a path of generosity. God models an, an open giving spirit that we can all live into, benefiting all of God's children, a generosity that can become as natural as breathing. Brothers and sisters, it is our legacy. So let's push, push a little further into that today with a couple of thoughts. To live and leave this kind of legacy we must first of all embrace generosity as a mindset. Now, if we're honest, we realize a, a lot of our perceptions about money were learned, not earned. Perhaps you grew up in a household that didn't talk about money. Or if you did talk about it, it was always, well, there's not enough. Money has become a shame trigger. You didn't know what you didn't know. And it's scary to bring money up. But no matter how much you have uh, or don't have, you're always believing that you're broke. There's just never gonna be enough. So in order to actually live a generous life, there's gotta be a shift, a change of your mindset. You've gotta change your stinking thinking at every income level throughout all of our lives. Money is an essential tool, a resource, a gift from God, purposed for us to manage. That's right. We are the money managers, not money owners. Remember. Everything, everything belongs to God. If our mindset is, okay, God, it all belongs to you, then I have the privilege of managing my resources. It opens us up to the fact that no matter how much or how little we earn and manage or keep or save or give away, it's all God's anyway. It changes our mindset away from ourselves and toward the world around us. But to change our minds, we've got to be open to God changing our hearts. Paul said it this way, each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, this is an issue of the heart. Several years ago, my husband John was like scrolling through Facebook and, and noticed a post from a friend of his about an expensive adoption process they were attempting to work through. Honey, he said, come over here and, and, and read through this. And we read about this couple struggling with infertility and their deep desire to have a family and their faith in Jesus and their determination to adopt two children at the same time. 
And when we saw how much they were attempting to raise, our hearts just melted. We also knew that we had just received our tax returns. And without missing a beat, we agreed to give our friends this money for their new family. I mean, it wasn't a ton of money, but it's what we had. And we knew that God was tugging at our hearts to live out this thing we call generosity. We had our own plans for our tax return, but we were developing a generosity mindset, an open hand and soon to be an open heart policy. We know that God works uh, and breaks our hearts on behalf of kids and families. And we knew we needed to demonstrate what we said we believed. So friends, there's a reason we say here at Gingosburg that no child within our reach goes to bed without faith, family, or food. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Kids are at the heart of God. And that day, kids had our hearts too. So let God change your heart and in the process, change your mindset. When our heart shifts, your mindset shifts. A generosity mindset realizes the earth is the Lord and everything therein. And we want to be part of God's bigger economy. We want to make a difference in the world. Friends, there's a freedom waiting for us when we step into this generosity mindset. That's the first thing we need to know. The second, a legacy of generosity embraces generosity as a lifestyle. Now, a mindset left in your head is just a good idea. Let me say that again. A mindset left in your head is just a good idea. Living a generous life can't stop at being a good idea. It must be a lifestyle. God was attempting to teach the Israelites lessons in the wilderness, not so that they could have all the answers, not so that they could, their ideas about God and others could be solid. No, their purpose as a people was to physically demonstrate a picture of God's generosity so that their neighbors could see the depth and beauty of how they lived and want to live that way too. They were to be living examples of generosity. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, but if I just had more money, I could live a generous lifestyle. That's a lie. That's a lie either someone has told you or it's a fib you are telling yourself. It is not about the amount of money that you have that makes you any more or less generous. Just a few days ago, I listened to a Carrie Newhoff leadership podcast where Carrie interviewed Chris Hogan, author of Everyday Millionaires. In their conversation, they remarked about broke money habits versus millionaire money habits of everyday people. Now, most of us would assume that you're a millionaire because you've made lots and lots of money. But Hogan reminded listeners that a third of the 10,000 millionaires in his study made less than $100,000 a year as a household. It wasn't about how much money they made. It's about what they did every day with the resources they were given. It was about their lifestyle that led to wealth and abundance and generosity. Now, no amount of money is gonna fix a broke lifestyle. We've got to stop buying the lie that only rich folk can be generous. Everyone, and I mean everybody, can live a generous life. It's why we've gifted you with Ramsey Plus. We wanna help set you free to live a lifestyle of generosity. Our third legacy lesson claims that generosity is a daily action to combat fear and anger. When you and I experience broke, there's a surface reaction, but then there's the thing behind the thing behind the thing, fear and anger. We are afraid. What if we don't have enough? God, what if there is never enough? Now in this pandemic season, it's tempting to stay fearful about many things, to be angry about our own lack of control, to stay broke in the wilderness. It's why we need daily practices that rid us of unhealthy fear and anger. That daily practice is giving. Seeing a need and meeting a need in someone else's life. Look, I'm not talking about you writing checks that you can't cash. I'm talking about realizing that God can and will use you to supply the needs of others. Freedom comes when we're able to give from ourselves, even when we're struggling. When we focus on the needs of others, it's amazing how these feelings of fear and anger start to dissipate and are replaced by a profound sense of of purpose and of hope. Our God is a generous God. Our God is a giving God. And because you and I are made in the very image of God, we were created to be givers. No wonder giving makes us feel so good. The practice of generosity opens our hearts and allows gratitude to shape our lives. We are able to see God directly working in and through our generosity. And it takes intentional, disciplined steps to get to that kind of place of freedom.
This week, Pastor Rusty sat down once again with Ivy Glover, Community Development Specialist and Financial Counselor at Wright Pat Credit Union, to talk about some practical steps to help shape our generosity practices and to leave a legacy that lasts. Uh, generosity, yes. it's one of the core themes of living the Jesus life, which is what we're all about here. Um, but the idea that we could spend as much energy thinking about getting rid of or giving away our things um, as we spend on trying to make ends meet seems like a distant, far off idea, maybe even impossible for most of us. Um, so can you help us today begin to embrace and live into a legacy mindset? Yes. So I think that's really huge. Legacy mindset, you know, how we think, how we feel and what we envision for our giving. And I think that's really where it starts, right? We're all in different seasons of our lives. Some of us, like myself, are just trying to make sure that the children are where they need to be, that bills are paid and that the tuition is taken care of while knocking down some debt. But having a giver's heart and a legacy mindset that says, I understand that what I'm building today will also impact the future Mm. and, and years to come and others to come is really, I think, a good start starting point to how we um, take that mindset and put it into action. Yeah. Just having that heart and that mind for what I'm doing today is really creating a building block for where I'm going and where my children are going and where other believers are going in the future, right? That is not just about me. It's the impact that I have around me. Yeah. So the stuff we're doing right now is laying the groundwork and the foundation. We're, we won't end up generous givers uh, later in life by accident, Not right? by accident. But we're laying the foundation, not only in our giving, but in other things we've talked about throughout the series, budgeting um, and getting out of debt, some of those things free us up for that. What are some of those building blocks? Um, if we're in the season of, or we're beginning to think about leaving a legacy, what are some of the things we need to be thinking about practicing in our lives to, to set us up for that? So a few tips that I think I would offer is one, know your vision. What do you envision you're giving? Who do you want to give to? Do you want to give to certain organizations? Do you want to give to certain causes? You know, know your vision. And that goes back to knowing your why and what's important to you and your yeah. family. And so that, how, that, that, how does that translate? And then you want to work with a professional, you know, a financial advisor that can sit down and take your vision and take these things that are up here in the sky and put numbers to them and make them technical and make them work and share with you the different avenues of giving that are out there. You know, there are different avenues, including giving through your churches, giving through foundations, giving directly to organizations, um, giving through your family. You can create family foundations. And all giving avenues aren't always created equally. And there's also other resources to help you grow your giving, you know, different investment and insurance tools that may help help you to not only create opportunities to give, but to uh, refill the pot, if you will, on an ongoing basis. So working with a professional that can help you take that vision and put it to action is really important. And then I think the third thing that I would share is with that actively working on the vision um, and actively working on your legacy actions on an annual basis, reviewing your opportunities to give, making adjustments where needed, um, thinking about how you're balancing not only the future giving that you're going to do, but the day-to-day needs that you have because life happens, things change, you know, adjustments need to be made to meet those needs that change. And so in actively keeping your eye on it and working the plan, it goes back to those building blocks. You're really creating the foundation for what can sustain for a long time after, you know, you well on into your years. So yeah. Yeah. Are there any tools or resources that can, that can help us identify like who, who's someone, who's someone to call? How do, how do we, how do we go through that process of finding even a coach or a, or a financial counselor advisor? Sure. That's a great question because a lot of times people are connected to maybe a financial person through their job because they, you know, contribute through retirement, things sure. like that. But outside of that, where do you go? Right. Um, your financial institutions, your credit unions, your banks are oftentimes a good place to work um, with because they may have a retirement or a legacy or investment organization linked in with them. We okay. have one at the credit union um, or other financial advisors are good. I always recommend check with those that you see doing it well mm. and ask them who they work with, yeah. right? The people that you know have built um, the resources and are working with individuals, ask them, do they have a trusted advisor or professional that they would recommend? Um, Another thing that you can do, even when it comes to giving, there are databases out there of like nonprofits and different organizations and foundations um, that you can just Google at this Mm -hmm. point to find. Because again, all giving spaces aren't created equally. You want to make sure that you're giving in spaces where um, your purpose for your giving is being met in what you're doing. I mean, those um, databases can help in kind of venting that and vetting that out on your behalf. Yeah. But yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So much of what you shared with us through our conversations uh, has to do with intentionality and doing the hard work now that yeah. pays off later. So thanks so much for, for being our teacher. You're welcome. Absolutely. Do the work. It is work. It doesn't have to take 30, 30 hours, 30 yeah. minutes a week can make a difference in your finances. So yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Ivy and Rusty. And I pray that God uses our practical wisdom to help set people free to live generous lives. Generosity is a mindset, a lifestyle, a daily practice. So let's move generosity from something we talk about to a lifelong practice. Today, today we're calling you to commit to generosity. Now, if you're new to Ginghamsburg, we invite you to simply enjoy being our guest. But if Ginghamsburg is your faith community, your church home, this is a time of commitment. Today, we have the opportunity to commit to a lifestyle of generosity through God's mission and ministry at Ginghamsburg. God can take our combined resources and multiply them for miracles of biblical proportion. Manna that lasts. So I invite you, I invite you to fill out a commitment card here at this link. Now, for some of you, you know exactly what to do. You've made a commitment before, but others may appreciate me breaking it down. First, start where you are. Maybe you've never given before, and that means you're going to commit to giving a certain amount. Let's say $10 per week. For others, you've given, but not consistently. It's time for you to set up a reoccurring gift. So others, you've been consistent giving what we call a tithe or 10% of your income. And today's challenge for you is that generosity, our generosity journey doesn't, doesn't stop with 10%. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Perhaps God is nudging you to take that next step in generosity, to see God at work in and through your resources and to go beyond the 10% tithe. For all of us, this practice requires open hands, giving what God has called us to give and receiving what God is calling us to receive, exploring inner rewards of a generous lifestyle. So open your commitment card on your phone, on your device. Take a moment to prayerfully consider where you are today and where you wanna be. Let God change your mindset. Ask God for grace to live that, that generous lifestyle. Move forward to commit to who you wanna be each and every day in God's economy. Now we're gonna give you a minute. I want to pray for us as we make our commitments to the movement of God through Gingham Sword Church. God, our hearts and our bank accounts are open. You are a generous God, and so God, challenge us toward lifestyles of generosity. God, we trust your provision. God, we trust you to move. God, we trust you to lead us into the future. So thank you. Thank you for giving us the ultimate example of generosity that lasts. Amen and amen. Thanks, Pastor Rachel. And thank you for your generosity this week and in the weeks to come. Now, prayer has been one of the most misunderstood practices in modern day Christianity in the United States. Each time a tragedy strikes, a hurricane, a, a pandemic, or an act of violence, Jesus followers are quick to say they're praying. But many inside and outside the faith community have become skeptical of prayer as a practice. Why pray, we wonder. We'll dig deep into the why and the how of prayer, asking Jesus to teach us to pray.
of God and manna. Dag it. <laughs> All right, let's go back and redo that whole first part. Now that I know what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. It's not like I haven't read that 17 times, but anyhow. <laughs> okay. Let's go back. <laughs> Take 25. All right. At Rat Pat. Rat Pat. Our third legacy lesson claims that generosity is a daily action to convey it. That can be it. <laughs> this week, Pastor Rachel. You're not Pastor Rachel. <laughs> 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 I gotta stop laughing. <laughs> All right. 